All right, talk me into it. Let's give this a shot. We're starting with the function in our traditional form. And from that, there are some things we can determine for that. So if you're curious, follow along and kind of get to see where we're going with it. Um, but there are gonna be some little mental gymnastic leaps that we need to take, but we are able to understand them, but I'm not gonna be able to stop and pause on every single one and kind of wait for us all to catch on up. And so some of the steps I'm gonna do are not intuitive. So let's just play along here. I know that this expression is also equal to this expression. And to confirm that, we can go backwards. Let's multiply a to this first term, a -A ax squared. a to this term just leaves me with a bx. Why'd you do that? Well, yeah, why? Well, let's pay attention here. Um, I want to try to create a perfect square with inside this traditional looking form. And so if I just look at what's inside the parentheses, I think I can determine what its perfect square is. Remember, we half the value of this coefficient. So that's b over 2a, and we'll go slowly here. So it's b over a, we divide that by two, which equals b over 2a, and then we square it which gives us a b squared over a 4a squared. So b squared plus a 4ac or 4a squared. Now to maintain the balance, because I add something to one side, I either have to add it to the other side or take it away from that same side as well. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away an a times a b squared all over a 4ac or 4a squared and those a's will cancel out that I'll show you in a second. Now, why did I multiply by an a times this? I thought you just added a b squared over a 4a squared. Why are you taking away an a times that stuff? Well, were you able to catch on that when I added this term in here, this a is also be distributed across, so I also have to take in consideration that this term is being multiplied by the a. So if I'm aware of that, then I need to take away the a multiplied by that term. All right, let me just kind of clean up the work a little bit. I'm gonna clean up in two places. Why do we do this? So we can create a perfect square. So what times, what times itself produces this? That's an x plus a b over a 2a. Kind of cool. And then I have over here, I have a takeaway, uh, no, I have a plus, a c minus, I'm gonna cancel or factor one A out on the numerator and the denominator, and I'm left with a B squared all over a four A. I gotta double check and see if I got all my work in there. All right. All right, getting closer to a look of form that I have here. So let me just do one more thing here. A times X minus a minus b over 2a, you'll see why here in a second, squared plus a c minus a b squared over 4a. Now what's kind of fascinating here is I have very closely to this form. Do you see the form that I have in there? So h equals the minus b, two, minus b over 2a, and then k represents all this stuff right here, which is a c minus a b squared over a 4a. Now, I'm not gonna worry about that k for now, but what was very interesting in this process and that I am gonna pay attention to is h. I'm gonna pay attention to this because that gives me the x value of my vertex and that's an important point to have. So if I can figure out what the h value of my vertex is, that's my x coordinate, that's good. And then I can evaluate my function 
at that point to see what its counterpoint is. So the vertex of a graph that's in this traditional form is my h, which is minus b over 2a, and its y value is the function evaluated at that point. And there I have my vertex that I can derive from a quadratic that's in its natural form or in its standard form. Um, so let's look at an example here. 